welcome viewers again to the channel now as we have said that the first video in this series about academic writing we have presented and this is uh, hopefully the second part the part two of the same topic academic writing uh, in the previous slides we have discussed already the classifications of academic writing there are six types six classifications six patterns that we have so far understood and in the first video we have completed the introduction to the writing process now we are going to deal with the second point that introduction to the conventions of academic writing without wasting time let us go to the second topic the introduction to the conventions of academic writing and here at the very beginning you need to understand the difference between academic and creative writing in one hand you have academic writing on the other hand you have your creative writing and on academic writing what is it the intellectual exercise logical and argumentative development of ideas a chain of thought is systematically developed arguments and counter arguments are presented conclusion is reached based on these arguments so these are the factors these are the points of academic writing and on the other hand you have your creative writing which basically deals with the expression of sentiment and empathy and exaggerated language. So there is a marked difference or there are marked differences between academic writing and creative writing. Now you can give examples from the previous topic, previous video, or you can create by your own. So these are the factors that you need to understand at the very beginning, uh, the difference between the academic writing and creative writing. Now let us move on to the factors rules or conventions on the academic writing there are several first one is the first person pronouns i and we and me in the writing should be omitted as far as practicable as far as practicable so there are 14 to uh, 15 points that you need to understand and these are the points one by one we are going to discuss about it these are the 14 points and from the first to the 14 we have to understand very meticulously and therefore in this video till to the end we will be able to understand what is the 14th number writing should not be repetitive and must be precise now here maybe you uh, here you may be asked about the rules and conventions of academic writing but you need to you need not focus all these 14 points you have to choose specific one but what we have suggested here or what i have suggested here you need to follow the 14 rules um, very precisely so that any question may come from these 14 topics and you can able to answer anything if you have understood properly these 14 topics now again without wasting time let us go to the first one the omission of first person pronouns like i we and me in the writing as far as practicable so instead of writing as i argued it is better to write as has been argued so you can understand that in academic writing you cannot be very uh, f informal you cannot be colloquial you cannot write by your own so these are the factors these are the systems or conventions or rules that you have to follow while writing an academic writing so be careful because it is your future it is your time when you have to understand and write academic writing so if you don't understand the rules you cannot actually create a very good piece of writing now in english there is a practice of using introductory there and it the following examples will give some idea about this usage for example instead of writing the sentence let me first explain to you the laws of demand and supply in economics suppose this is the example or this is the line which you can give as your example now it may be put as in academic writing there are laws of demand and supply in economics that need to be explained so mm, you can understand that i we me in the writing should omit we should avoid in order to create a good piece of writing as i have already said the second topic is sometimes indefinite third person like one or the student in appropriate situations may be used to maintain the impersonality of writing here you have to follow this impersonality of writing the very word impersonality is important because some questions may be asked on this topic too now what about this if you want to write good english you must pay attention to grammatical correctness follow this 
um, sentence. This is according to the academic writing or the conventions of academic writing. This is wrong. This is not appropriate. Now, which one may be appropriate then? To write good English, one must pay attention to grammatical correctness. This one is a correct sentence. Or the second one, the student needs to pay attention to grammatical correctness to write in good English. This is also a correct sentence. So indefinite third person like one or the student in inappropriate situations may be used to maintain the even personality of writing. So this must not be a personal writing or the method of personal writing must not be used in academic writing. So there has to be an impersonality and that impersonality must be reflected in your writing. So these are the examples that you can follow in the slides now the third point is writing in the passive voice now the first question is why passive voice why i should write in academic writing in passive voice academic writing should not read like an instruction manual and hence the passive voice is recommended so you are not going to read an instruction manual as written in a direct speech or in active voice now Example one, follow it very carefully. Always use capital letter at the beginning of a sentence and with proper nouns. So this one is an example. This is the sentence. Now in this sentence, carefully look at it. The subject is implicit. That is you. The object is rather long. Capital letter at the beginning of a sentence and with proper nouns. This is the object and the verb is use. The sentence may be written, rewritten in the passive voice by omitting the command and the understood subject. A capital letter should be used at the beginning of a sentence with a proper nouns. So in this way, you have to be creative in academic writing. Don't misjudge it because you are not writing a creative writing. You are writing an impersonal writing that is in academic writing. You have to follow the impersonality of writing. Now, this is the reason why we should use passive voice. And this is the example one. Now, moving on to the second example, you should not spare any effort to find the right word. This is the second line, second sentence, second example. In the passive voice, it will end like no effort should be spared to find the right word. So it is impersonal, formal and suits the need of academic writing because it is formal. And because it is impersonal, it is very much applicable to the writing process, the academic writing specifically. Number four is exclamations and interrogations should be avoided. Now, these expressions uh, like exclamations or interrogations interfere with the formal style of writing. How? For example, what a great poet Shakespeare is. Look at the sentence with exclamatory mark. Now, this is an exclamation that does not add to the analytical or scholastic content of the writing. It may sound dramatic, but in written communication or formal nature, it does not achieve the desired effect, but rather disturbs the poise and equanimity of the style. So if you look very carefully, this is more dramatic because if you are writing an academic writing, impersonality is very much needed, necessary. So in order to create that impersonality, you have to approach with that uh, omission of exclamation and inter inter uh, interrogations etc so without writing with exclamations or interrogations you have to approach in academic writing now the same is true of interrogative sentences in academic writing because this one the previous one is an example of exclamatory sentence now you are going to get that interrogative sentence the primary purpose of a piece of scholastic writing is to raise a few questions and attempt to answer these. Instead of using notes of interrogation, it is better to write an affirmative sentence using whether, for example, if the question is, is the character, is character more important than plot? It can be expressed in sentence like the following. It is often asked whether character is more important than plot. So you are not going to ask a question. You are not going to put question mark after the sentence. So you have to create a good impression in your writing and that is the reason why exclamations and interrogations should be avoided in the sentences of academic writing these are the examples of the fourth point moving on to the fifth phrasal verbs are not used or should not be used usually phrasal verbs are not used in this kind of writing because they are considered to be colloquial and hence informal a phrasal verb is a phrase such as a stand down or run into which combine two or three words from different grammatical categories. These are useful words and uh, are widely used in conversation and informal writing. But in case of formal writing, like an answer in an examination or a thesis, it is better to avoid it. So it is not anymore a colloquial subject, colloquial 
uh, way of speaking it is more important to use informal style sorry it is more important to use formal style so impersonality in your writing phrasal verbs in this case actually bring you the informal way of writing but whether you have to be formal or informal it doesn't matter in your writing academic writing always demands the formal style of writing so in that case you need to avoid phrasal verbs instead of torn down refuse can be used the following are a few examples where phrasal verbs are substituted by single verbs like set up you can write establish do away with omit set up accelerate run into meet so how interesting the phrasal verbs that we have learned in our madhyamik examination before madhyamik those phrasal verbs are not at all entertained in academic writing because academic writing is a very specific set of writing where you have to avoid phrasal verbs like the colloquial usage of language like the interrogations like the exclamations remember to avoid phrasal verbs number 6 is colloquial usage of language and slang should be avoided so there must not be colloquial language there should not be slang in academic writing now here there are few points certain usages through though very popular are considered to be colloquial and should be avoided in academic writing for example in ordinary conversation if one wants to know the response of another person to a particular issue she may say what is your take on it or what do you understand of it but in academic writing it should be a question seeking a response to that issue in the same manner slang words should also be avoided though the conservative nature of academic writing does not accommodate slang words it may be mentioned that these are also an integral part of language and more often than not serve as an index of popular culture so uh, you should avoid very specifically slang and colloquial usage of language because those may harm your academic piece of writing now in your academic writing you have to create as i have said from the beginning good impression and in order to create that good impression these are the factors that you should avoid very very carefully otherwise your writing shouldn't be academic writing at all maybe informal writing and informal style is not seriously demanded in academic writing moving on to the seventh number 7 the ideally there should be no direct speech it may be noted here that ideally there should be no direct speech in academic writing except in quotation if one has to refer to a conversation it is better to be reported than presented verbatim take for example the following anecdote once a british judge said to sir gurudash banerjee then a barrister at calcutta high court you belong to half educated bar sir gurudash replied you to quarter educated branch now if one has to refer to the story in any writing or jurisprudence one has to report it and then sentence may run like this sir gurudash banerji a barrister of calcutta bar was called half educated by british judge to whom he replied that the charge belonged to a quarter educated branch now what you have so far noticed here that there is no direct speech you have to write in indirect speech and this indirect speech will direct your academic writing to a good position so direct speech basically harm the sentences harm the turn of structure of academic writing and therefore it is said that it has to refer to a conversation if you are referring to a conversation it is better to be reported than presented verbatim so the first part is a verbatim record second one is in in direct speech so there should not be any direct speech number 8 is there should not be abbreviations there should not be abbreviations like for example that is or i are shall or i will it is always advisable to write the full form for example i will or for example etc it is also advisable to avoid numerals in academic writing instead of using arabic numerals 105 105 should be written Number 9 is sentences should not start with and but or numerical and should not end with split infinitive or prepositions but this is something i was not counting on see the in sentence look at the sentence very carefully this is not an accepted style and it can be avoided if the previous sentence and this sentence are joined together in a compound sentence then but would not be in the initial word i was not counting on a something like this is more appropriate for using in academic writing so you have to remember that sentences should not start with and but or numerical 
and should not end with split infinitives or prepositions because this will harm the writing in the same way. Number 10 is here, possessive case should preferably be indicated by of and not by apostrophe is as far as possible. The possessive case indicated by a hyphenated style is also not recommended. Take for example the following sentences. The company's profit increased by leaps and bounds. It should read the profit of the company increased by leaps and bounds. So this, is, this should not be company's profit. There should not be any apostrophe s. Yes. The association annual general meeting was held yesterday. See that there is no such apostrophe s yes, or there is no such uh, no possessive case indicated by off. Number 11 is the tense of the verbs used in the writing must be consistent. What does it signify? It signifies that most of the time in scientific writing, the past tense is used because it reports experiments and analysis that have already been completed now in literature the present tense is used even though factual statements are uh, maybe in the past tense shakespeare wrote macbeth now the ghost of banco shakes its gory locks see here the tense of the verbs is using here or you tense of the verbs is used here uh, as a consistent way that shakespeare wrote macbeth or ghost of banco uh, you know, shakes its glory, locks, etc. In literature, the present tense is used even though factual statements may be in the um, past tense. Factual statement like Shakespeare wrote Macbeth. And in literature, present tense is used why the ghost of Banco shakes its glory, gory locks. Here, it is uh, used in literature and that is why it is in present tense. But the factual details like who wrote Macbeth, Shakespeare wrote Macbeth. So you can write in past tense where factual details are mm, demanded or factual details are called for. Now, number 12 is appropriate punctuation marks should be used in writing answers to questions or dissertations. Unlike the comma and semicolon, the semicolon and full stops are interchangeable. Use of double colon should be avoided as much as notes of interrogation and exclamation. So you can remember that exclamation and interrogation should be avoided like that the double colon should be avoided in the same way. Number 13 is ornamental, hyperbolic and figurative language is not fit for academic writing. Consider the following line. In youth, thousands of flowers bloom in our hearts, rainbows encompass our horizons. This line expresses the dream and hope of youth in hyperbolic, which literally means exaggerated language. This may be good for creative writing, but in academic writing, it should read like the following. Youth is full of hopes and dreams. So see here how precision is here. Theme. So you have to be precise in your writing without exaggerated statements, without hyperbolic expressions. You have to write very clear cut, very simple uh, in a way where ornamental or figurative languages are not present completely abhorring, completely devoid of such ornamental, hyperbolic and figurative language in your academic writing. As a general rule, adverbs like very used to qualify adjectives should be used sparingly. So this is another point, a minor point, not very significant. However, I have given here, but you may not add as number 14. Now, the last point is the writing should not be repetitive and must be precise. Academic writing should not be repetitive and must be precise. Why? Because in order to achieve the desired effect, what you desire to get if you write repetitively or if you write something in a repetitive way and without any precision, then your writing should not be a writing at all. So if an idea is repeated again and again, the chain of argument gets disturbed and instead of leading to the next level of an idea, it is lost with an acquisitious labyrinth. So you are just doing round and round and you are saying something in a roundabout way. Readers may not get what you desire to achieve or what is your point. Then it becomes important or it seems rather important that you should not be repetitive and you should not be not precise. That means you should be precise in your writing. So. The nature of academic writing is not exhaustion, but rather a quiet presentation of arguments. So there has to be argument or rather lots of arguments that you carry forward with because without argument, without your logical progress, your writing must not be academic at all. Now to the part where questions may be asked in the sentence in the uh, following manners, mm, your uh, university questions or exam questions may be like this. 
like what is a phrasal verb give one example what is the introductory there and it discuss their application with examples as you can follow and on the right hand side you have the marks of the questions number three what are the requirements of academic writing explain with examples four state the differences between academic and creative writing fifth what should be avoided in academic writing what role tense perform in academic writing explain what is meant by impersonal style illustrated example why should not there be any direct speech in academic writing number nine comment on the use of language in uh, used in academic writing and number 10 comment on the several other markers of good academic writing now you can easily understand that these are just mere 10 questions there may be several questions that you can find from the previous slides just gather those questions prepare in your own way questions may be asked the questions that you find just here and may not be so it is up to you how you are going to prepare yourself i hope these help you uh, to a large extent and uh, yes uh, obviously the resource is the same text um, which i have also uh, given you in the previous video the same book that i have used for these all uh, kinds of materials that you find in the video and except this that one more idea that i need to express from my heart that thank you very much for watching the video uh, if any problem persists do write because you know sharing is always uh, an object of caring if you share we together can learn something thank you very much again and stay blessed until the next video comes thank you